<laughs> All right, so take off. Welcome everyone. Welcome again. Thank you for engaging. Thank you for being here with us and exploring these juicy topics with us. So uh, my name is Susanna and I'm here with... Or is Matthias Schwendberg? Um, and then... Yes. And we are the trio of the Armoring Arts, and we love, or I can speak for myself, but a little bit for them. <laughs> we love to explore life, and we kind of have a sport as personal development is kind of a sport. So I would like to start with why don't you, Dean, just take a minute to introduce yourself briefly? Okay, so uh, I'm Dan, and uh, introduction. So I guess. Because I've been celibate now for technically six years, but actually if we take the year and a half of every six months having a little bang bang with Sana, then it's actually <laughs> almost eight years. <laughs> that is eight years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is actually, this is why this topic kind of got nah, popularity in a school because people are kind of asking me why the fuck are you doing it? including Sana and Matt. So, um, I don't really know what to say in terms of introductions, but um, I think this is enough for now. And as the conversation carries on, if there are any more questions, I'm super open to, to share and to talk. Hmm. Over to you guys. Hmm. Matt? Yeah, okay. So, um, I'm into Tantra sacred sexuality since 1997 or so. I had a Tantric awakening in 2000, something like that, and have um, played and explored around. In uh, Berlin, there was my playground, Kit Kat club, nightlight scene, and a kind of sex positive environment. I have been married, I have children, I have been in monogams uh, situation, I have been in polyamory, I've been kind of celibate by accident or by fuck up. And uh, so I've been very interested in all themes around sexuality my entire life. So I've been a facilitator of Tantra and uh, uh, sacred sexuality. I've, uh, I'm a facilitator with Deanne and Sana about uh, sexual dearmoring. I was a body worker for almost 10 years. I'm still doing it here and there. And um, I'm really curious about everything that has to do with sexual transformation, with sexual energy. And I would not call it Tantra anymore, but I would call it kind of uh, transformative uh, uh, energy about our sexuality. And I'm really excited about being here today. Yay. And you, Sana. <clears throat> Thank you, Matt. So my name is Susana. Some of you know me as Sana previous Sana Sanita, or formerly Sana Sanita. Now I go under Susanna Beatrice. And um, I would say I am extremely curious. <laughs> I am, I've been on a path of spiritual and personal development for about 25 years, started early, always had this calling in my heart for something different in society. Uh, and different roads led me to start exploring sexuality consciously. I've always been kind of curious and sexually open. Um, but about 13 years ago, I came across <clears throat> the armoring and started to explore the tantric path more consciously, just to discover that I've been tantric my whole life, basically, <laughs> when it comes more to the energetic principles, yeah? Um, but I dove into the realm of sexual healing, sexual dearmoring, tantra, polyamory, uh, and uh, so I've been on a ride for that the past 13 years. Um, I totally, I write a book on money, sex and power because I think sexuality is a topic that is super important to lift up and because it's such a you know potent fascinating field that is so distorted in many ways and i think it's important that we have you know even more open dialogues and conversations so we just relax a little bit more around the topic right <laughs> um what else to say Basically, I'm super open. I've tried polyamorous, uh, polyamory. I've tried, I, I love monogamous relationships. I've been in celibacy. 
and uh, I will talk more about it. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here and happy to answer your questions or dialogue, whatever comes up. Yeah, so I just love that you brought it up. You know, this tree, I'm just going to say that. So Dean and I, Matt and I, we met like 10, 11 years ago. And I was, Matt was one of my first uh, teachers actually in, in uh, sexual healing work. And I was so turned on by Matt by then. <laughs> we were never lovers. He'd been like the best, uh, best teacher ever. He transformed my life massively. I'm not going to go into this a different story. But later on, I met Diane, and Diane and I was lovers. Uh, yeah, eight years ago, seven years ago, and then I become a partner with Matt, <laughs> and now we have this beautiful friendship, like a deep bond of love between us, and we work together. That's really, really lovely. You know, some people would are never friends with their with their partners. You know, there is this like bye, you know, they don't meet still. And I'm just so happy that we have this beautiful bond of friendship and love between us and our relations just keeps on evolving. Yeah. That's, there's no, we're not defined really. By, by saying that the three of us working together, the sexual thing is out of the way and that's yeah. so liberating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me by default. <laughs> <laughs> So, so to come back to my question, and so, and Mirabelle was coming up with this question, the last uh, webinar about uh, the benefits between, or the benefits of celibacy and uh, sexual freedom. And, uh, uh, and the webinar got formed around this name. And uh, so we want to dive deeper into that, about this topic kind of, uh, what is celibacy for you? Is celibacy you're just like completely away from sexual energy at all? Or does celibacy means you don't have sexual encounter with other people? And sexual freedom means that you are with other people? Or does it mean that you are fuck around? Or you just have a lot of intercourse? Or you just holy everything? Or you just like um, monogamy and um, committed to one person? So, so the distinction between celibacy and sexual freedom, um, I would like you maybe the end to start defining them from your perspective. Okay, so actually, when I was reading all the messages and all the uh, even you too actually about the reasons for celibacy, we still nobody actually touched the one that is my reason. So the reason I'm celibate is because I'm on this path of. Uh, self-mastery, if you like. And uh, about eight years ago, my teacher told me in working with me that actually I was super promiscuous prior to that, like polyamory, like all of it, years and years of just everything. But I didn't know how to manage the emotional and relating dynamics between me and people. Somehow I didn't, there was layers and layers of it. One layer was being hurt by women a lot, like from karmic and, and this life. So there was a lot of mistrust towards women in the first place. Then there was a layer of, I was explosively, sexually, compulsively active. And so I just wanted to fuck everything that moved or flirt with everything that moved, or be sexually open to everything that moved. But what they did, and I did, this is what I didn't actually get, and this eventually became a reason why I had to go celibate while I'm still celibate, is that every one of those openings where my second chakra didn't know its boundary, second chakra is to do with relating. It's relationships. It's me and my potential partners that... It, uh, many other things as well, but it essentially when it comes to the uh, topic of celibacy, that's the second chakra domain. So what it created was layers and layers and layers of women being hooked into my energetic body and me being hooked into them. Most of it was unconscious, but that still doesn't stop it. And so the result of it was that my hip area, my whole pelvic floor, in fact, not just pelvic floor, the whole hip area, was physically tight, physically hot, 
and I was unable to relax it. Like I was never like, you know, if I, if you have a fist like this, I can do this in my whole kind of pelvic area. It was always like this and I couldn't relax it. Like no matter what I tried, it was always tight. And so then because on this path that I'm on, it came a point of like everything has to be relaxed and worked through and, and transmuted and transformed and, and softened so the energy can go up and down easily. And so this is where my teacher said, look, man, like, I don't know how to tell you this, but there are countless women hooked into the second chakra. And unless you stop engaging, you cannot clear it. And we need to clear it. So for me, it was choosing either path to God, which meant say no to relating, or it was doing what I was doing, enjoy life and say goodbye to my path. And that I wasn't prepared to do. So then I started and initially I asked her, how long is it going to take? I was thinking like maybe two weeks, three weeks, you know, then I can go and play again. <laughs> she was like, well, I know one guy that did it in eight years, one did it in 14 years. So I don't know how long it's going to take you. I was like, oh, fuck. Oof. But because I'm so committed to my path and because I was so promiscuous before, honestly, another pussy couldn't fix me. Like another fuck is just not going to do it. It's not, it's not going to save me. Like I can, I fucked enough and I didn't get enlightened and I didn't become a master. So it didn't make me happy. It didn't work through this, this ball of fire. And if it, like my hips felt like they were stretched to every direction, continually 24 seven, nonstop. I was like pulled, like just like on a cross from every direction. And I, I didn't know how to relax. So I had to stop. And so what started happening... Can I, can I ask you a personal question? Diana? Let me just roll. Let, let me just roll. You're going to have to hold it. I'm going to roll. Okay. And so what started happening as months went by, after about six months, I started feeling more relaxation. Like this was happening easier. But still was not done. And basically now, almost eight years later, I'm still not fully open but I'm much, much more relaxed, way more, way more able to to do this stuff with my whole hip area, all the muscles that are connected to it. So, okay, Matt, go on then. Yeah, I mean, it's an, it's an interesting question. I mean, you know, many people know at the moment, I'm really interested in kind of creating video material and just like collecting different topics and ideas. And one of them is, for example, the NoFab theme. So some of you might know, no fab is the kind of extension of fab and fab is just like masturbating, ejaculating to porn and no fab means people getting off porn and the addiction of ejaculation to porn. And I, I, I was wondering specifically in celibacy and as well in this topic, celibacy and sexual freedom, freedom but in celibacy, um, uh, what are you doing with your sexual energy? So, so I know that you just, uh, release here and there to just like get your semen going or get or, or your, your fluid out but so, so how do you individually engage with your own personal sexual, ele sexual energy so the question comes from that direction specifically in nofab that people say well this is completely abstinence of not only porn as well of fantasizing as well of kind of turning myself on and touching myself and self-pleasuring. And I have a completely different approach to that. But towards you and what might other people interested in, in celibacy. So what are you doing with your sexual energy as a life force energy instead of kind of pushing it down? So how do you keep it alive and as an engaging vibration in your body? So that's a broad question. And I need to narrow it down a little bit. So first of all, I was never, I never had a problem with uh, porn or addiction. I basically, I just went out and, and fucked. So my drive didn't stop and still active. But what I found is first, I can't remember how many months, but months and months, I didn't come at all because I thought, you know, celibacy, so I'm not going to come. What I started feeling is in my right leg, between my groin and the, and the knee on the inside of the right leg, I started feeling the sensation like water trickling feeling. I mean, obviously there wasn't water inside my leg and it kind of felt like, like 
you could get a fuck like wrong, really, really wrong feeling. And I didn't know what it was. And then I had uh, Suzanne Rosgard actually gave me a, 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 a end of the armor and we were looking at uh, like what, what's really going on. And she said, listen, your prostate is really enlarged and you should go and check it out. And I thought, wow, I know why. Because I didn't come. And so then I started masturbating just purely for the purpose of releasing the pressure. Not really fantasizing, not really being interested in... Because I wasn't. I was like focused on my path. This was just energetically, physically almost, I had to deal with this sensation in my leg. And then initially I had to do it, I don't know how many times, but quite a few. And then the sensation stopped. And I thought, okay, this, this kind of fixed it. And then I would gauge it. And at first it was like, maybe like once a month, if I didn't masturbate, I would start feeling after a while, after like a month, I would start feeling this feeling again in the leg. And I thought, haha, I know what to do. So I went and, and, and then it stopped. And so now it really depends, <laughs> honestly, because I get horny, of course. Like w springtime and summertime, I get super horny, and then it's more times, then it's like a few times a week. But sometimes in you know, the winter can be like a few times a month. But for me, it's completely disconnected. It's got nothing to do with sexuality. Yeah, it's like I'm gone past now by so many years that... I've really, now I'm just looking at the mechanics and dynamics of my internal energy system. So that's one answer. The other answer, we were talking about the cultivating sexual energy or, or how do I deal with that. And this, I actually don't have a problem because I have so much fire, so much energy in the body anyway. I never, I, I didn't ever have to cultivate my sexual energy because it was depleting. I always have plenty. So... Now I just have plenty. I do I, so balancing testosterone. This is a super important topic, and so this is where this thing comes into play. So for me, I need to be creative. So I need to use the energy in a creative way. I need to do sport. I find that if I don't do sport, I kite. I kite a lot, and uh, if I don't kite or if I don't do sport, then I start my body starts getting too fidgety. I don't know. Just not. I can feel them out of sync. Out of. I cannot be present. So for me, it's a combination of creativity. Creativity can be in many different ways. Uh, I can also create my house. I can be a daddy, which I am. Uh, I can create my business. I can uh, just do crazy things. But sport also I need to do. So it's managing the testosterone, managing the sperm count, and and that feeling in the, in the, in the leg in the, in the prostate, and. And then Sana also knows when I started the journey, I had to be like, get the fuck out of me. Like all the women, like get the fuck out, like quite forcefully because I didn't know how to be with, because I was so used to engaging, so used to being kind of fully active. And I didn't know how to be with, like if she would come close to me or somebody would come close to me, I just didn't know how to be with it. So I had to be forcefully out for a few years. But recently, I kind of found a way now they can be in my face, horny as they want, and it doesn't phase me. I don't really Somebody have to. Somebody has their um, microphone on yeah. A big button? No, it's me. Somebody it's rainy. Them? No, it's rain. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's super rainy. So, um, now I find this way of, I can just be, I know I'm not going to engage. It doesn't phase me. Sometimes recently I started thinking, recently, I mean like over the last maybe few months, I kind of think like that, I'm like, oh my God, like I wouldn't know how to do it anymore. Like I've forgotten. I need to start going back to school and like when I start getting sexually active again, maybe, I don't know, re-educate myself on how to do it, you know, because it's been so long. He has in vagina. <laughs> ah, that's how you do it. Anyway, so I think that's enough talking. It's a, it was a very, very long answer. I'm open to questions, but uh, I'm, I'm passing the torch. You have anything, Sana? Oh, uh, what it means for me with celibacy or sexual... I have a question. There was a question. Dan, Dan I have a question for you. Sorry, who is um, talking? It's me, Marco. Hey, hey. Hi. Um, my question is, by uh, being on this long path of, of celibacy, did your need for intimacy also disappeared define intimacy um closeness with a, a loved one physical contact 
skin hunger? No, I never had. No, I don't have that. The thing is that because I'm on this path, I'm intimate with myself, and because I work with people, I, I have many tools that help me get in touch with myself on an intimate level and to feel myself deeply, essentially through through skin, through uh, sensitivity. So I don't actually. I don't know. Like with my daughter, we are very touchy feely, and uh, it's. But still, it's, I don't have that need. I'm kind of built maybe in a way that I don't really need that. Because I know some people need it and some people don't, or not as much. So at the moment, or at least for the last few years, I don't really have that uh, craving, if you like, or need. Yeah. Yeah, so my question to you individually, as on, on a personal level, as we have been engaging and relating and being sexual partners and and kind of, you know, my take on as a man, kind of the uh, goalless, goalless sexuality. And um, and this is something that is really an interesting, important topic specifically for, for women. Um, mm. And as well, from my perspective that I, as a man, I just like try to cultivate my sexual energy. That means if I climax in the form of a peak orgasm, mm. I know that I deplete my energy and I'm just like kind of going, you know, I, I'm probably, ejaculation celibate but when it comes to sexual energy I'm in, I'm in sexual freedom but I know that you and women have a different approach about orgasm or climaxing or orgasmic waves or orgasmic freedom or ex, ex, orgasmic expansion from a perspective of of um yeah your natural expression with your sexual energy and I'm curious about how you feel and think and are around that as a woman mm. I actually I'm just going to start in another corner uh, True start. Every corner. <laughs> and it, I've been contemplating since we decided to set up this webinar. There's like it's the topic of being kind of alive in my in my uh, in my awareness in my system and and I've been uh, thinking about going into celibacy, just like six months or eight months something, because I really want to dedicate and focus all my energy into building a fundament in my business for the moment. So there are some visions I want to follow. And then I noticed that, you know, lately I've been flirting a little bit. I've been on some dating sites, trying that and I've been there and like my energy been out and I realized how much energy it takes, you know? So it really is a distraction. Yeah. And it, it actually is also not the priority for me. Like I, I love my a little bit like Dian, like I'm so dedicated to my path and my purpose, and and uh, and um, so for that I actually consider to go into celibacy for the moment. Just to what happens if I just consciously put the blinders on? So it's a conscious choice, not by default or not by my accident. Like lately, I have not been so sexually active with others. It's been like a, it happened to me. <laughs> It was not by choice. <laughs> but I was like, okay, but then my energy is still out there. So actually now I feel like, okay, I just want to go, you know, fully into myself. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting to explore that. But when it comes to, 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 uh, to sexual energy, and for me, that is life force, you know, for me, it's when I cultivate my sexual energy and the arousal, I become a better person. Like I become a better woman. I become more happy. I become more creative. I f it feels wonderful to be myself. Like it feels wonderful to be me because it's this like buzzy champagne feeling in my body. So I, I, um, I also uh, exercise a lot. I do a lot of breath work. I, uh, med I meditate and go kind of deep into my energy field and I really like it's it's like cosmic crack for me <laughs> I love that word <laughs> and and to just talk into what you said like the 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 like goalless sex I I totally agree to that it, that for me it's um and the goal is not to come basically like I feel I feel I don't get so depleted sometimes I'm just lazy and I have like a clitoris orgasm and and then sometimes I kind of work my body much more it's a bit different but I don't get I don't get depleted 
really. What I notice mm. is that my, my butt cheeks get tighter and then doing yoga is more difficult. So <laughs> that makes me don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because like the, the peak orgasms is more like a, it's like a contraction, you know. So you want to go into this to the expansion more. Does that uh, answer your question? Yeah, yeah. yeah just uh, just curious how you how we how is this this days um, compared to my memory. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, the breath work, breath work, and meditation is is my uh, my go tos, and and I mean, I'm, my body is activated. And then I also, yeah. I love going to take uh, like pleasure sessions or I don't do it as often anymore, but if there is a good person around who offers uh, mm. more of their, yeah, pleasure-based sessions. I love that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then I want to finally, I just want to end with one thing when it comes to like celibacy or sexually active that. I think I see there is a value in all of it and I encourage everybody to explore their own to, I encourage everybody to explore like we only know by experience and you and we only know once we have experienced yeah so I went through polyamory and I see the beauty of that but for the moment I would not go into that like I want simplicity and ease which no relationship is <laughs> fully but it's like the more I can co contain my energy for the moment and go deeper, that is more interesting for me, for example. Mm. But it's, mm. it all has its beauty. Everything has its beauty. And it's, it's a lot I can talk into it, but I'm going to pause it there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Or a lot I can say about it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I jump into that and just share my perspective about celibacy and sexual freedom. I think I'm a kind of a mix between the both. So I'm sexual celibate, I think by coincident accident. So my, my last relationship ended last September and I'm, I was not really inspired to go in anything else because I feel like I don't want to engage with other people if it's not matching my own energy field and I'm kind of not interested in being in the same vibration and I don't want to educate anybody else anymore and it's so difficult specifically being a sexual educator for so many years that I just want to be free in the bedroom or free with my sexual energy and um, but being in celibacy means for me personally, I'm very sexually active with myself. So I have a, I have a very cultivated sexual practice that I call edging. And edging is pretty much this kind of place of sensual expansion into literally infinity and then having multi-orgasmic stages where I can hang out in this infinite space of expansion and peace and ecstasy for hours i love that and sometimes i wonder it's like is it actually kind of an addiction and maybe it is but i don't really care because it feels really good and it's really liberating in my body and i really love it and it's really freeing and i have to full access i call that the orgasmic grid and i can tap in whenever i want to and why the heck would i limit myself and have with somebody a sexual experience that would be just like a kind of a a spike of that what I can experience with myself if I can't do that with another person and that would be not of my interest or I would not be curious about having kind of a little kind of peak here and there if it's not matching the vibration I can have so um, and because of that I have you know when I feel it, sometimes on a daily basis, full moon comes is pretty soon and that activates me so I'm very into that uh, and then I have some days that nothing is happening for me and then I have sometimes by choice kind of like a ritual for myself where I go into an ecstatic orgasmic state and celebrate myself for hours. Uh, and um, so I think this is a kind of combination between celibacy and sexual liberation and yeah, curious how that is resonating, what we three have shared with other people and we have already... Uh, 40 minutes in and when it opens up for questions and answers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear something. Yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, unmute yourself and then write Christian. in. Christiana. Can't hear you. Well, ask to unmute. 
So unmuting no. is a left hand corner no, on the microphone. You, I found, uh, um, thank you for your, your comments. And um, I'm a bit excited talking to so much people about this topic. Maybe other people can relate to this. But what I not heard in 40 minutes is the word love. Mm. And I'm I'm in a, in, a, in a time I had no sex for many years because I understood that I need love. I, I need a deep soul connection. Mm. And I was I was kind of shocked a few a few weeks ago as I heard the word demisexual. And I don't know if you're used to this word demisexual. I found out this is an expression for people who need an emotional connection to their partners to be uh, to have uh, sexual feelings. And the word demi, as I understood and learned, is is means half. Mm. Uh, it's a French word half, and it's very difficult for me to understand why um, why not being in a no, why to to be in a in a deep emotional connection towards somebody is something not full, because for me this is would mean a very full state to have a sexual connection with with somebody and a really loving relationship. Uh, so I just I just can't agree with with this uh, with this term to be demisexual to not be fully somehow because. I want everything, you know, in in a connection. And we can, of course, discuss what does everything mean. So everything can mean something totally different for every person. But for me, it means to have not only a, a bodily sensation towards somebody, but also a heart, my heart and my soul and my interests and my daily being. So this, I would be very curious what you think about this emotional aspect of sex yeah. thank you yeah. I can. Lusana, can yeah yeah i can take that or you okay, want to I, I have as well something yeah you want to start uh yeah i just make it short in maybe two minutes um i love that and it's so important and uh when it comes to sexuality for example when i'm in in sexual relationship with myself I love myself dearly in this and without this self-love I would not have any interest in sexual encounter and when I'm in sexual relationship with a woman um, without love sex doesn't work for me and literally love makes me hard and if there is no love in the place erection doesn't happen for me and my experience with sexuality is that I feel a penetration from that love that comes towards me that makes me erected or hard and it feels like I'm I'm penetrating back with love and that's that's always the 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 go to or the key component and one important piece and to round that up is and I'm very um dedicated and excited and passion about this dynamic about the woman's body and the wiring of the nervous system specifically about the womb and the wiring of the vagal complex to the heart and the social engagement system that literally needs safety and connection to actually feel this emotional response and this emotional cycle and and uh, loop and without that i'm actually not really interested in sexuality thank you so much that helps yeah, yeah. okay that makes it makes things um, more full yeah. to hear this. Yes, and I agree. I I think because this topic is so broad and we kind of dip with you know we talk about the energy and relationship and polyamory. All of those topics deserve like a deep dive on its own. So the love making or having sex with love. I mean, it just. I think we all three can agree upon that, or at least I want to speak fully for myself. For me, I cannot. I cannot just fuck without emotion. Like I am, I am an extremely loving being. Like I love so much. I can even, I can even meet a stranger, make love, and I just love. I love. This is what I do. I love. Like I love. I penetrate with love. This is the. This is who I am. And I would not. I, I cannot shut it off. And I would never go and be with somebody just like to have a hungry, horny fuck. I, I cannot, it is just completely uninteresting for me, completely. 
And for me, it's 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 very much of a connective and sp deep spiritual practice. Like for me, it's it's like connection is key always. Connection is always key. Like I have zero interest mm -hmm. in in just fucking around or being like no, from, yeah. So thank you for yeah. bringing that up. So yeah. it's not thank becoming you. misunderstood. So yeah, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Who else? Great question. Any other? Well, Mirabel asked a question here. She's saying uh, also thought came by that uh, when you become really, really open, sensitive and de-armored, I feel like you will become very lonely and it must be hard to find a new partner if you wish to have a partner. Mm, I can kind of disagree with that one because we are mixing different questions here. So at least you know we create our own reality. There is no this equals that. Whatever energy I have inside myself will attract or will mirror my inner uh, understanding back to me. So it absolutely doesn't mean that if you become the armored and open and sensitive that you end up alone. It just means that you're going to become a different person and you're going to attract a different kind of person. Different kind of reality will be reflected back to you. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, like a question, I wouldn't even contemplate that concept. Mm. I would maybe say like right now, I'm going to talk about myself, let's say right now my heart is closed and I'm fully armored. I'm going to find a partner who is similar. When I become de-armored and fully soft and open, I'm going to find a partner who is equal to that. This is the equation. Your question doesn't really equate, at least not in my perception. Maybe the other two will have a different answer to that. Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's even more complex than just equals attract equals because there's all about personal complexity and who do we attract and why and all of this. But <laughs> it's another webinar, so we can go into that. Yeah. But yeah. definitely, you know, when you become more sensitive, so for me, I, I cannot have a lover that just like, I want to make her come, for example. It's just like this mm -hmm. transaction and doing and forcing or I mean, it just doesn't work because my body is so open. So my standard, I raise my standard because I'm more sensitive. I raise my standard and then I want to be met in the level where I am. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. But by you dearming yourself, like, why wouldn't you want to become an even, like, why wouldn't you want to explore your potential even more? Why would you stay in a level because of some fear? I know you're not there, but, you know, why would we do that? So that's just, you know, that's just mind. Yeah. It, and of course, you more, the more you work with yourself, the more aware you become, the more sensitive you become, the harder it is to find equals because that's not the majority of population. That's also truth. You know, there is less playground. I disagree. Yeah, I do that then. <laughs> Thank you. Very generous. Yeah. You're so welcome. So I would say, I mean, that's the best gift I have given, ever given to myself is to really go deep into my body and my sexuality because it's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Zip Maybe it. I can give my five cents to that, yeah. Mirabel. And I just read your question before as well. That, um, you know, I know a little bit about your history and the question is then, of course, without talking about anything, if there is an attachment created as soon as you're engaging with another person. So where you're giving yourself away into somebody else and making yourself dependent on what's coming back, how you how you be received. And from that perspective, it's probably a really good decision um, to cultivate yourself in there instead of just like trying to figure that out in unconscious engagements and trying to f identify and, and find yourself in sexual encounters and relationships that doesn't serve you very well. Yeah. So th the question then is just really to figure out what's the attachment style and uh, mm, exactly. what, where do you lose yourself, where do you give yourself away? Yeah. And then, of course, I mean, we have talked in the de-armoring training, just a tiny little bit I shared about that relationship dynamics um, that has to start with ourselves, with agency, autonomy, ownership about our feeling, ourselves independently. And you are only find that in solitude with yourself. You know, as you just said that long walks in nature um, and then observing yourself when you come in proximity with another person, where do you change and make small steps in engagement 
when you realize and recognize, well, I give myself away here and I'm kind of just like losing myself in there. And um, the way how I see that is as soon you just find somebody with similar values of agency, ownership, uh, autonomy about whatever is important in your life, then you recognize that you don't have to project and the other person doesn't project either. So there's no attachment created. And all of a sudden you have an energy field between you that is kind of vibrating and resonating. And out of that energy field, what I call this interpersonal space, this is where something can occur that I call relationship. Yeah, And wherever that goes, you you know, the, the idea of that relationship is, is there an intention behind that? Where do you want to go together? You know, it's just like, what the vibration that is being created um, sure. aiming for is just like what's the project maybe you just want to create a business maybe you want to create family maybe you build a house maybe you want to travel together maybe you just want to just like be sensual and sexual and just making love for the for a spiritual experience but being really community communicative and honest and clear and transparent about intentions yeah mm -hmm. This is what I would say to that. And that's that's a very deep journey for me again and again and again, and that yeah. probably never stops. Hmm. Can yeah. I ch chime in here? Or? Uh, but wait, yes. Mirabel, can you uh, just feedback, was this useful or does this bring new questions? Because I feel like there's a deep something in there and I'm not sure. Fear, if in, there. fear in there. Yeah, no, it's super useful, all the three perspectives. Um, so that what Matt said, uh, it comes up that I, th I think I really have a mindset still of when I'm not, not giving myself away, I'm closing myself. Mm -hmm. And because I try to become an open being, like heart open, but I think I confuse the, the, the chakras here. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I confuse the, the heart and the second chakra. So and then be very, Mm. Huh? No, but then being a little kind of this um, uh, boundless, like you don't really feel yourself and then mm. you do it because you want to be brave, you want to grow, uh, you want to learn something maybe and then you override yourself, you don't kind of catch up on the micro micro movements within, is that correct? Yeah. 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 I mean, it was like that before and still, of course, um, there's a lot to learn, but I'm, uh, I've, I've met a lot of the, mm. uh, of the demons down mm. there <laughs> during mm. the training. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think James, you had your, uh, mic unmuted. Thank you. Yeah. This is a really valuable conversation. I'm really glad to be in a, a group of people that are talking about the things that I'm thinking and working with and, and uh, practicing for myself, um, you know, I've gone into a type of cel celibacy. I'm not having penetrative sex with anybody. Um, my work involves sensuality and sexuality and I'm involved in different communities as well. And I've worked for many, many years with, you know, the somatics and finding that sovereignty and that agency. And what I'm hearing here, which mirrors the way that I see it, maybe in different words, is that, you know, when I pull pull back or come back into myself and reclaim that energy and um, learn those and see those places that are armored or tight or um, or things aren't flowing. And I need to take that time to myself to be able to do that, which is what I'm doing now. But then to know if I've really grown and learned anything, I, I have to step into other situations yeah. and then sometimes get thrown off base sometimes you know get to celebrate because i feel like i've learned something really you know like 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 i've actually learned and grown um and then having the capacity to move back and forth this is the way i see it it's sort of a paradox i can't silo myself just in myself and think that i've really learned something but then i can't just throw myself out there constantly and think like oh gosh i need to like keep beating my head against this wall in order to learn something you know they've done both of those 
a lot. <laughs> so, you know, this this way of 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 being able to move back and forth, but at be at choice when I do it. You know, it's like I <laughs> recently came out of a relationship too, and it was kind of the that I want to be able to choose my own chaos. You know, I, I don't want to just be thrown into or dragged into somebody else's chaos um, out of some mm. sense of, uh, you know, um, duty or need, you know, like if I don't get my thing, then anyway. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate it. And I, and Deanna, I really, uh, you know, listening to what you were saying early in the, in the podcast and then the last time too, which is what drew me back to this podcast. Um, I can't, I can't parrot what you said, but, um, that place of the celibacy not being something of just cutting off relationship. It's a place of finding out who I really am and, and coming back for me, what I call it, coming back to a baseline that is truly who we are, which, you know, if I'm operating down here, and this has been the baseline or it's the normal baseline in humanity. Um, and I'm trying to make that, then I'm, I'm, I'm not gaining anything. I'm not learning anything. I'm not growing. But if I open myself up and get open up those senses and really I'm able to expand, then the baseline comes up to, you know, it's not special. It's actually the real baseline where we actually are, are as human beings, who we are as spiritual beings, who we are as, you know, what we've come into. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really feel like we've kind of lost a lot of that in our cultures worldwide. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, uh, um, yeah. Anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you. I appreciate this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm very wanna, sorry, Matt. I just want to touch on what you just said, because it really, what I'm hearing in, in, in your share it, and, and all these other questions and stuff, it really comes down to the question, why do you want to be celibate? What's really going on? And what, like, where are you in your life? What are you working on? Where, like you put it in levels and I don't tend to see it like that because it's kind of generalizing I'm kind of working on myself and I'm accepting that we are like in a mishmash soup of everything is happening right now. So generalizing it, I'm kind of leaving it alone because it doesn't, I want to be super specific, like detailed. And so when I look at myself, then I can only apply whatever truth to myself. And when I look at you, I can only apply the truth to you, not to no one else. So I'll just want to put it in to also everybody here and everybody who's going to be listening, like really start filling in what do you need like what is the reason you're potentially thinking about it or doing it or i mean all of you are here clearly you're interested in a subject but the question is from which, which perspective are you interested in it? what is really burning in you what really needs to come alive what really needs to be worked through what bugs you in your head so like start cutting deeper and look behind and behind like more going to finesse of the work that you do on yourself, like why are you actually doing it? So I just wanted to put that in. I wanna, it's a great reflection. Can I talk into that, Matt? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, go for yeah. it. Because uh, I really love this of like freedom of choice, kind of like uh, that I wanna be able to, I wanna be in so, I was, I want, I. <clears throat> I want to have as much self mastery and mastery of myself as I can, so I can choose situations and how situations affect me and how much I want to di dive into things. And for me, that never means to shy away from something because I'm afraid or because I feel scared not to do something. Uh, like I want to, I want to. So what I like what you said is that, that okay, I want to explore myself, and then I need to go back a little bit to see like okay, what do I learn? And okay, and I work on myself and then I go in, I dive into life again to like, okay, wow, I, you're not grown some muscle here. And then I can pull myself out. So I constantly do this check in with life. I don't believe in just withdrawing. At the same time, it's when we talk about relationship, I mean, I think many people are kind of mindlessly engaging in relationship and sexuality. We make it such an importance, but don't really know why. So it can be really helpful to sometimes withdraw, take oneself out like, 
who am I without anybody around me? What do I really want? Like Matt said, what do I really want a relationship for? Like, am I in ownership here or am I just mindlessly being dragged around or meeting because this is something which is supposed to be in society, you know? Or so, habit. Or habit, exactly. Thank you. That's a great word. It's like how much in, 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 in you know, in healthy control, like understand me right, like how much in control am I over my own being, self. my own self, yeah. <laughs> You're reading my mind today, that's lovely darling. <laughs> oh, it's a sign. <laughs> so I love that because I, I really believe and, and that's why, can I say something with you Diane, where we kind of, we don't really agree with the celibacy thing. So sometimes I feel like I know Diane a little bit, yeah, at least. And I know he has, you know, a lot of sexual energy and he's, he's a great lover and he's handsome and he's very, you know, sensitive. And, and so I'm like, you know, you, 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 uh, you're like, you're being selfish, you know, holding yourself back, you know, and why don't you just dive in once in a while just to check, you know, because somewhere I believe there is still a hunger. There is a want, you of know, course I, there's a hunger. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm like, I'm trying to nug, like encourage him to just like, Hey, have a dip, you know, like just what happened? What's and, and the, what's the difference? Or at least go and take a tantric massage. Like you pay for a service and that that's it. Like it's safe. There is no like emotional entanglement, but this is what I believe. Like I don't, if we shy away from something because we are f afraid and then hold back, then we don't really master the situation because then it's still fear involved. Yeah. Can I don't I say that. Respond it, it, to that. Huh? Can I respond to that? Absolutely. I don't say that it's exactly what you're doing. I'm just. No, I hear you. I hear you. And so a little bit of a history. So Sana and I were together and then we stopped being together and then we started uh, the armor training and then I went celibate tooth. And then, because we did trainings every six months, then we had a little ding dong every six months for first, I think, year or year and a half. And so that gave me a year and a half of being celibate uh, outside those six months fully. And then having a deep, or like coming to check in, finger on the pulse, where am I with this thing that I was working on every six months? And what I found actually that it wasn't really getting, it was getting a little bit better. Like last time, there was like a year and a half in. It was a little bit, I was able to relax sooner. It still took me three weeks of, three weeks after the engagement, I actually relaxed, three weeks. So do this, and then it takes three weeks to relax. I mean, that's not mastery, that's bullshit. <laughs> no, 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 you shouldn't be. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so then basically, so then I went on fully and because I keep checking in, but because I'm doing it for this second chakra relating issues, I don't actually need to engage sexually because I can see how I'm still, like the pattern still is there, it still has me. So there is no point. Like a few months ago, we again, my teacher and I, we did another series of sessions and both of us were like, I'm, I'm still not ready. Like if I go back, I would just fall completely back into where I was eight years ago. Nothing changed because I haven't taken the root out of whatever I'm working on. So I totally believe in, in reality and I'm fully on, like, I don't trust anything until I test it. And if I don't feel it, it's not real or whatever, you know, it needs to be actual. So I agree with that, that you need to go back in life a test and then go back into drawing board and, and test again. And I do it nonstop, but I'm still not ready. I, I would be, because I'm after mastery, like 100% purity, I'm not there. And I need to be honest with myself because if I'm not, then like, what am I committed to? What am I actually spending my life on? And so, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing when I'm actually done with it and, and come out and ta-da and go and make love again. You know, really, I'm okay with that, but I'm not ready yet. That makes me think of, you know, why sexuality has been so, you know, for example, uh, spiritual teachers and religion and all of that. I mean, there is fear because it is hard to master it. It's hard to master relationship. You know, it's hard to master that connection. So, you know, can it be so that all these, you know, spiritual men throughout times just couldn't fucking 
master their energy. <laughs> so they had to make it the rule. You know, somehow yeah. the feminine path is different. You know, we are fluid, we are sexual, we are dynamic, we're a little messy, we're a little loud. Maybe I can be, but <laughs> there is this, there is this, uh, there is this difference. And, and that's why I like my, my cheeky self or uh, it's like, but is it really mastery if you just need to shy away? Is that mastery? I question that and I don't question that with you I just question it in the big picture like how come it's been so repressed and forbidden in many ways in many different uh, this is a great thing and I have uh, many examples of not many but some of for example Babas in India they're Baba uh, since childhood they were born into it and never ever had any women and then age 30 40 a first western woman comes with a little titties out and they fall tooth gone because they were repressing it. So this is sad. It's sad because it shows this, like they were drilling and mastering one side of themselves, but they haven't mastered the sexual energy. That's what I mean. Like, I know, I know. It will, will never disappear because they collected, like the hoop, I, I believe so, I don't know, but that's my, my more like all into life. Kind yeah, of and, then, and then you have me. Life. Yeah, but then you have me who in my work, in our trainings, for those of you that know, that did the trainings you know, but those of you that don't know, we do sexual dehammering there. So there's all these beautiful naked women, like, non-stop. So I'm putting myself in a situation where I'm challenging my sexuality, like, am I able to stay, I'm celibate because it's here in my face and, and Sana is also doing her best to kind of woo me in every now and then, you know? and. It's, it's okay, but so I'm not shying away, but I just know that I'm not ready. So oh, no. it's, um, yeah, it's, but it's sad to see when people, you know, this, this is what I did first few years. Do you remember? I was like, no, like get away. Like I, I was repressing it because I didn't know how to be with it. But now after all these years, I, I can be with it. So yeah, it's a valid, valid point. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is such an interesting topic. I want to come back to that what as well. Uh, uh, James said in combination to that what Mirabelle's question was just you know we can in forms of celibacy I guess all master the art of just being on our own and cultivating our own sexual energy and finding peace and harmony and self-love and, and mm, this is just my experience of um, you know, trying whatever I can tr trying everything in relationship in all forms is that the you know just like I, I, I can to myself uh, I can tell myself as much as I want that I'm just like having found it but the real proof is when I'm going back into proximity with somebody else and if I'm choosing to be sexually with somebody have I mastered myself here Am, am, I, am I capable of really being in attunement with my own energy? Can I stay in connection with myself? But, the, you, know, you know, we can all be f on ourselves to a degree probably for the rest of our life, but I think real transformation and the real deal happens in proximity and in sexual encounter between at least two people who choose to be sexually with each other. You know, it, 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 and, and, and I think, um, I don't know, I might get, I don't know, 80 or I don't know which, which age, but at one point I just have completely lost interest in everything. But I can say, you know, just literally in the last 20 year or let's say 15 years, I've done everything I wanted to do around sexuality. And, and, and I think of myself, I'm a pretty free sexual liberated being. And my experience being in a workshop for example, or when we are in the dearming training, and yeah, there are, there are naked bodies and there are there are beautiful naked bodies, but it's for me, for example, it's just another day in the office that has nothing to do with any sexual dynamics in me. It's just like yeah, this is this is the nature of how we look. But if I really want to go close with a person, then how deep am I capable of really going there without losing myself? And when we're just going out of prox proximity, how much can I still be myself without having lost myself in somebody else? And, and that's literally my kind of um, uh, aim. And, uh, and, and I would not say about myself that I'm a finished being or that I'm, that I'm complete in that. But at the moment, I would say I'm really, really happy about being sexual, um, promise 
promiscuous, but being with other people, but being fully sexual, liberated, and free in myself in all forms that I choose for myself. Yeah. Can, I, can I say something? Um, whoever that is. Yeah, the Rob, Robert, I've seen your question. That was awesome. Please say something. Here with conversations in my head and um, reactions in my body. Okay. And because um, it's such a big subject, and I feel like we, it's so easy for me and, for, and I think for other people too, to be just be intellectual about, it, you know, like we're talking about. It. But I know I keep thinking as we're talking about this that when I did the training with you guys, um, I guess about five or six years ago, I came back from, well, I, I came for the 11 days, then I went to Spain and I did the second one, which was supposed to be the first one, the immersion experience after I did the training. So I had 18 days of training in a sh relatively short period of time. And I came back with a new body. I came back with like an energy. It wasn't really um, matured or fulfilled. It was wanting to do something. Didn't really know how to do something with it, but it was clearly different than what I arrived with. Hmm. And it, was, it wasn't that it was sexual, but it was sexual. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's that state. It's that state. And it was, it was the awareness, what I'm calling the energy body. Um, and I've, I've done work before, before I ever did this work. I, I'm a Gurdjieffian. and I've been following the work of Gurdjieff for many years. I've been involved with that work. So without any sexuality, I mean, just from years past, having the experience of my body being alive. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And then I lost it. I left that work. This is before I came to you guys. Yeah. I had cause to leave it. I went back into the world, you know, from being for like 18 years in a, you know, in, in an organization that was the, the cultivating my spiritual growth, you know, in a matter of speaking, not sexual, no sexuality to it. But, you know, and circumstances that led me to do the training, irrelevant. But, you know, now where I'm at, you know, is what's really mattering, what's important. Because, you know, I've had that experience. Now I'm... Robert, what's your question? I'm not connected to the work that, um, that we had done in the past. Hmm. I want that connection. And there has to be a way to find it. I don't think it's sexuality or celibacy. Hmm. I think that's, that's like behavior, you know? So, I mean, Robert, Robert, what was the difference? You said you were a lot in your body. So what was the difference that made you go into your body? Well, I felt, I remember when I came back, I felt like I was walking down the street and I was engaging with people where I'm connecting to the, to the ground, to the people, to everybody. Yeah. I wasn't in my head. But exactly. But so what was it that brought you into the body? What was the actually step? You know, like I hear you I looking was, for something. I think, was, how I think it was 18 like days. I think it was 18 days of being with you guys, to be honest yeah. with you. So the I can't, body be, I can't be addicted to you guys. I have to generate for myself. <laughs> what I'm thinking Robert, is hang on a second. Let me just, I'll just uh, do a very short answer. Robert, basically, you need to keep practicing. This is the thing. Like what I'm hearing in you, you said 18 days. And in our workshops, it's super intense. It's super intimate. It's super personal. And it's practice. It's like being in the container of real life. And normally, when people go out to their lives, you don't have that privilege, really. So, but you need to create it. You need to create a community. You need to create uh, uh, friends that you can recreate it with. You need to go to gatherings that kind of have the similar energy. You need to practice. If you go back to your normal life after what you, the, the work you did with, us, we did with us, it's not a surprise that you kind of lose the, the, the connection with that zingy. Because for those of you that don't know, our trainings are super alive. They're very authentic, they're very alive, they're very real, they're very personal, very intimate. Of course, you walk out feeling, wow, I'm alive. But then if you go back doing what you did before, which is mingle with people that are closed, go to places where closed people go, you don't give yourself an option to actually... This is what we say during the trainings, people. Once you finish your trainings, you need to start mixing with people of similar caliber. Otherwise, you're going to go mad or you're going to go back to the old. 
it is not possible to be open like you are during the trainings and weeks with normal, I, I don't want to sound judgmental, but people who are closed and expect to have the same results. It's not possible. You need to change friends, you need to change groups that you mix with, you need to change activities that you do, even jobs that you do, because you need to surround yourself with people who resonate with new you. This is default. Without it, you cannot expect a, a result to last. You know, this, this is a sad true, but it's true. And so what I recommend, what we recommend in our trainings, what happens with me, as I was working on myself, every six to six months to one year, I would change group of friends completely. New people around me, new activities, new groups, because I needed to feel in resonance with me, new me. And because I was changing, I needed to keep doing that. So my recommendation to you, Robert, is like try to find communities and people that resonate or try to advertise and start doing little workshops, not workshops, but like gatherings at your own home and just somehow, I don't know, surround yourself with people that, that you want to surround with rather be a kind of, yeah. I want to add on to that as well. I, I agree to all of that, Dan. And also what I hear you say is that when what you felt in the body is aliveness, yeah? It's life. It's the only thing so that's wait, real. Wait, 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 yeah, exactly. It's the only thing that is real. So, and you, it feels sexual, but it's not sexual, but that's, it's life force. That's how it feels. It's this zesty, zingy, bubbly, champagne feeling. And it makes us feel good. It makes us feel happy. It makes us feel creative. It makes us ching, lit up. And, you know, there's even measurements on different frequencies, you know, and that's a very fine, high frequency. We want to be there. Like, why wouldn't we want to be there? So what I'm saying is, like, if you have that as a, a you know, there is an embodiment, there is a memory of that you want to be here. And you even say that you like, you long for it, you know, go do breath work, go dance, find yep. a dharmic practitioner, yep. find, a, find a tantra practitioner, somebody who helps you activate your life force. Because it's all about coming in down, down into the body again, yeah? Because you will never figure it out, like it is impossible. Mm. Head will block because head has a more dense frequency. So if you're in the head, you can't feel the body. You can't feel these tingling sensations right. in the body. So the more you can just dive straight into the body, like shout, scream, go to do dynamic, yoga, breath work. I mean, this is great stuff to start to activate that again and then just as a byproduct, you will start to feel the aliveness and the joy coming up again. It's, I can guarantee it. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I give you a private session. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> you didn't work. <laughs> How much yeah. is it by that? <laughs> And I can say uh, that to all of you in here because I'm so passionate about that, that of raising our own energy because it makes us feel good and alive. Like this society is so mental, we're so busy, we're so stressed, we're focusing on the doing on to-do list. Like there's, there's, we, we, we forget how it, fe many forget, I'm not going to say all of us, many forget how it actually feel to be alive. And every time, you know, when people feel alive, it's like... I love this. Like we 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 want to be there. I can guarantee that you want to be there. Many of you are, but <laughs> this is life. Yeah, this is life. But our society yeah, and, is so and, built and, on and, a and mental would, process. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say here in in our Western culture and society we live in is even we are very spoiled with our kind of sexual liberation and freedom. And you know, coming from different countries, some people, some countries having kind of nudity uh, at the at the uh, lake when you go bathing in nature or at the beach. And this is just like, this is, is, is just simple and easy. And then you come into cultures. Uh, this is kind of more like a little bit just like, no, don't do that here. You know, we are still very spoiled, but there are cultures in this world, you know, there is sexuality through kind of politics and uh, uh, religion and society, and uh, you can name it, so suppressed, you know, and the only thing that exists is the heterosexual normative does like to make more of us, but where is the kind of the spiritual aspect of that, and the spiritual aspect with ourselves with that life force energy, and the spiritual aspect in proximity with other people, and the proximity with life force in itself with nature. So what is our sexual relationship with life itself out there? 
Yeah. No, this is just, uh, you, you know, and, and we, have, we are really fucking spoiled. I just want to say that. Who is we? Well, society in the Western environment, we here in Sweden and Europe, so we are pretty spoiled here. Uh, is, is there I'd another like to, question? I, yeah, I'd like to, wait, wait, wait. wait. Question. Yeah. Please wait. Uh, Ilona said, uh, Iona, sorry, I don't know how to say her name. Uh, she kind of made a point about, uh, I thought self-mastery is about being able to be with more people with ease to expand my circle, including more, including the disconnected folk. Well, let's talk about it for, for a little moment because I think it's important. So what I know from my experience and also from people that I met who are more pure than me, the purer you are, the more lonely you are. And this is a fact. Like my teacher, she is a master and she basically told me some time ago that she feels super lonely because there is no other master she can share herself with. Master cannot share herself with a not master. It's not possible. You need to, in order to really be met, you need to vibrate at the same frequency. And so if you like the high on a vibrational scale you go, unfortunately, because we live in a fucked up world, the more lonely you are. So. Yes, I can be with anybody and I work with anybody, disconnected or connected, that's no problem, working. When it comes to my personal life, I also want to be met. And unfortunately, I cannot be met by disconnected folk because I feel they are my children. You know, I'm talking to a child, a spiritual child. So I don't feel met, we're not equal. So this is my two cents on that one. So I, I don't know, Sana Mark, you want to say something on that? Yeah, I want to <clears throat> mention briefly because it, it kind of activates a bit about my journey. So let me see. Ilona, Ion, I, I, Iona, Luana, 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 yeah. Sorry? It's Joanna. Joanna, thank yes. you. Yeah. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, so I don't know where you are on your journey because sometimes. Um, where are, where are you, by the way? Let me see. There are so many people here. Maybe I can chat with you a little bit. See, okay. I don't know how to show you. Your no, I'm going to find, there you are. Okay. So just because this is an interesting topic and I kind of, uh, just briefly about my own journey where I thought I had to be open to be spiritual, to be, uh, uh masterful. And I just dove into some polyamorous <laughs> circle and I denied kind of love and intimate connection because it was kind of, it didn't fit into that circle where I was. I kind of became a good student and I actually, in order to be so developed, yeah, when I realized that I actually hurted myself. So this can be a big bullshit believe, like, you, you know, I almost getting angry there. So I just want to hear, not angry at you, of course, what is it, where are you in your journey? And maybe I can reflect something. Huh. Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, it's it. How can I answer this briefly? I think I went through this thought process that uh, self-mastery is about being able, you know, to be with your parents for longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Right? Being with who for longer, uh, sorry? Your parents. Your parents for longer, right? Oh, wow. Like, um, good one. And, uh, and I've experienced the opposite, right? I, I've experienced mm -hmm. a lot of sensitivity, a lot of opening, and... Um, I found it very difficult to be around my workplace, around mm -hmm. my, you. you know the people from my. Um, unless I hold space, when I hold space, I'm in control. I mean, like when I hold space, I, I feel like I'm really aligned, and then I can be with anyone. Yeah. But when I'm not holding space, I mm -hmm. feel so much of the environment. It, it's yeah. really difficult to ground, to be yeah. grounded in myself. Yeah. And I think I have this expectation that I should be grounded enough in myself. Okay. Not to be. Um, you should. So much. Right there. No, you should. Right there, Dan. No, so how, 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 how are you with your boundaries? Mm. It's like, a... No? Yeah, that's that's a it's a big story. Yeah, most likely very big, very yeah. big story. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also neurodivergent, so this means that my nervous system is really open just by yeah. design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. So, what could you um, 
I mean, I can, I can just from my own perspective, I, I'm super sensitive and I pick up on people's energies and environments. And back in the days, it was terrible. I could hardly be out because I just, I was just absorbed and everything. And on a kind of personality level, I was super codependent. I was a pleaser. So I was trained to all the time feel into people's needs. But what helped me massively was really to start to, you know, put boundaries, be more true to myself and define my own structure more. And that have helped me so much. So I'm thinking if there's something you can do, like when I hear you say this with, with your boundaries and that, that it's a bit vague, what, what could, where could you start? I mean, that's also self mastery, you know, that's a part of, part of becoming masterful in being around other people. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, 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 something wait. you said about defining your own structure really resonated in my body. And I'm curious what you meant by defining your own structure. Yeah. Uh, I need to I need put a little pause on this because I'm conscious of time. We have six minutes left of this webinar. And so, Joanna, I would really invite you to come to one of our trainings because this is exactly what we work there a lot on. Like finding no, I'd love to come to your trainings and I struggle to be in trainings. That's part of my boundary setting as being neurodivergent. I can I cannot be with people for more than three hours a day. It's too much for me. Um, OK, if, if you want, you can uh, yeah. you can connect with me. and We can have a conversation. Yeah, I have a one to one. If, and uh, and uh, I can give you some advice. But basically, if other people having the same issue, like defining yourself is to understand your needs, your wants, who you are, yeah, what you like, what you don't like. That sounds very basic. But when it comes again into a relationship, this is why it's so difficult to be around other people because we lose ourselves. So this is like the journey. Okay, what is true for me here and now? Yeah. Can I have a super short mini question? You go for it. Uh, Connect with me, Joanna. Yeah. Uh, I just want to put in this with longer relationships about connecting with people and be mirrored by a partner and that yeah. you might be intimate with. But it's great to surround you with, with different people and change environments and all of that. But there's also, for me, it's been a super helpful way of staying in connection and to go deeper and even when it's struggling and even if we don't we're not on the same path or not same level all the time it's still a learning and for me it's been it might be struggling for a while but to keep the connection has for me been quite important absolutely i 100 percent agree to that i agree I, to that like 100%, deep, well. yeah deepening and because that's also another form of mastery we can just go deeper and especially i can imagine that you have such a conscious relationship as well like you can really mirror and you can stay in the fears and you can show your shadows and that's a sport which is i mean for me that's divine relationship i love that form of relation relating that is precious yeah but thank you for bringing that up so, so my suggestion would be for yeah. the for the sorry, Dan, I don't want to interrupt. No, I was going to say we need to start wrapping it up, and I would actually just want to invite people. Uh, I mean, basically, we never have enough time in these kind of things because this can now turn into a session, and this is amazing. But let's invite you to do these sessions properly. So, if any of you really feel like this is interesting and you'd like to dive deeper into all of those topics, come to one of our trainings, because this is really the purpose of those trainings, is to actually have more time. You know, in a webinar like this, we can touch top topics, we can answer some questions, but it's like super shallow and it, I almost feel like irresponsible that like deep questions, but we don't have enough time to actually go through it and, and, and do some work. So maybe we talk about our future trainings and then for a few of you that are interested in resonating come and and, and dive into it so we actually yes matt no. i just want to say i will post the link uh, just like to the training if you want to check it out so you see it here it's uh, in the chat just like copy or just like push the button and then you have it open in your browser and just have a check just like what we do and when and where and how and what how much and so on we have three trainings coming up over the next i think three months right First one is uh, Body, Sound and Breath in Denmark. That's happening in two weeks. Uh, there are some spaces left. It's super amazing. Go to the website and check it out. One after that is uh, uh, Sana's uh, The Armoring Through Pleasure. This is three weeks later. 
again go to the website to check the details and then the last one is uh, the dehammering training in April again go to the website and check the, check the info and connect with us if you have personal questions we all work one to one uh, all three of us so if you want a session just get in touch if you have any questions and you want to have a like a discovery zoom call with one of us for half an hour to find out if it can help you or wouldn't help you what would be the next kind of stage on your path we are super open to do that too um, am I forgetting anything guys no, I feel that it's kind of a we're gonna send out uh, an email with this recording and then we can also add the links and yeah, uh, emails no. where you can connect with us if you have questions um, and, yeah, yeah. I, I have a, I have a personal agenda and the agenda is because I want to say just like what is my kind of wisdom that I would like to provide for everybody and I would like to ask you and Deanne and Sana if you have as well kind of a minute kind of just like what would be your five cents your wisdom your one minute wisdom a giveaway for everybody to take with them mm. maybe I start because it was my agenda yeah, go on yeah okay and then you can collect yourself and just like let it rumble so so one of my main points at the moment to research is um, what is sexual freedom and liberation and most people that I know of and uh, and I was one of them have this um, neurological behavior in the nervous system when it comes to sexual encounter to contract and clench and squeeze their muscle yeah and stop doing that and learn to relax and expand and become an orgasmic being and this is why the armoring has saved my life this is my five cents okay I can go um, when my heart is pounding <laughs> <laughs> if I would have a little bit more time in a circle, I would probably roar right now. You who know me, you know what I mean. Um, for me, everything that I do and what I want to support people into is alignment, authenticity, and understand that we have power within. The power to change, the power to choose, and to encourage people to understand that like we are not victims <laughs> we we can we can decide to live our life as we want to like get out of the program yeah get out of the program and into power this is my my this is why i do everything everything that i do is for this alignment and self mastery so we can live more fully and free freely like life is meant to be joyful with all the ups and downs and the whole point is to be so skillful that the ups and downs doesn't really bother us anymore it doesn't really move us like we don't need to get rid of it it's like i enjoy life thank you mm -hmm. I think my my one sense, first of all, I copy paste what both of you said. I really agree with both of it. And uh, on my side, something new, I would just say, clearly you're here because you're interested in the topic and you're interested in working on yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spending an hour and a half with us here. So my recommendation is like really look in a mirror and say, what is it next that hinders me on my path? Like, be really brutally honest. Like, not like hoochie tootsie, nicey nicey, oh, I'm good, I don't need to do anything because that's bullshit. So, really look in and say, what is it the next? Where do I need to catalyze next? What's really important next? And then just go and do it. Like, my, the, the way I live my life is through action. I'm like an action baby. You know, everything needs to be lived and, and really fully lived. Immerse yourself deeply into the experience of being alive. Because then, by the time I'm really old, I can look back and say, I lived. There is nothing more I could have done to live more. So I empower you and inspire you and, and, and really like just go and live. Like whatever you need to go and do, do it now, like today, not in 10 years. And so I'm open, we are all open, come to our trainings, come to any other training, just work on yourself, live. If you want to fuck, you go and fuck. If you don't want to fuck, you don't go and fuck. Just like live, stop sitting on the fence, stop being a wishy-washy, stop like, oh, I don't know what to do. It doesn't matter what you do. Do something, and if it doesn't feel good, turn 180 degrees and run the other way because that will feel good. It's either life is a yes or no. It really is a binary. Like it either feels good or it doesn't feel good. It's good for me. It's not good for me. It makes me grow. It makes me go back. It's either light or it's dark. It's super fucking simple. 
So just like live by it, just like go and do, like Bashar says, follow your passion. Like go and do what you want to do and do it 100%. That's my five cents. I love you all. Mm, great. <laughs> so, yeah, I love my, that. My, my question request to all of you being here today, thank you very much, everyone, for being yeah. here and listening yeah. and contributing and writing in the chat or just like being here. Please feel free to write three, five words, what have resonated most with yeah. you in the chat, kind of express yourself for a moment, just write it in, get it out of your system. Just like, don't take it with you and just write something down. It's always a good your main takeaway, what you bring. Go. Your main takeaway. 